Well, it looks like my life revolves around tow trucks. I've said this before, I'm gonna end up having to own one. But we are on the cusp of the beginning of the end. Like I've said, this is the four rotors life begins now. So we're, we're taking it out to Creaform's headquarters out in Costa Mesa, which is about 45 minutes from here, thankfully without traffic, to go get the whole body 3D scanned. What does that mean? That means that we can finish the aero, we can do some aerodynamic testing, and then create the carbon fiber body mold from the 3D scan. So what you saw was uh, at SEMA was a Rocket Bunny kind of hybrid weird creation. Ultimately, we're going with our own body style. So it's gonna have that similar influence, but let's, let's be honest, I need to have my own identity. I'm behind the building, there's like a roll-up door. Okay, yep, I see ya. Yeah, if that's a door right there, then yeah, let's let's uh, drop it right here. Uh, here we are out at Creaform's headquarters, and of all things, I run into an old friend from high school who actually works at the same building, a very small world. We're gonna get her unloaded, meet up with the guys, and discuss what is about to happen. So this is a bit of a blessing in disguise. When I wanted the car to look pewter, of course, I ended up picking a dark gray satin. In 3D scanning world, that is excellent because in 3D scanning, you want something that's not as reflective. So it seems to be that this was something very much meant to be. I'm here with Payam from Creaform, and this is the four rotor 3D scan. So Payam's gonna walk us through what process it's gonna take to set this vehicle up to be scanned and the variety of levels that are available to people, as well as the technology used. My name is Payam and I work for Creaform. We're here today to demonstrate the HandyScan and scan this car, all of it, with the HandyScan system. The way the scanner works, uh, any object that you'd like to scan, we need to put reference targets, these six millimeter sticker targets on that part. Okay. And once we have uh, those about four inches scattered away around on the part, then we can start scanning. Uh, one of the limitations with 3D scanning technologies right now is reflective surfaces. Uh, when we have reflective surfaces, uh, the reflectivity uh, of the surface disperses the reflection of the laser oh, okay. lights. You're going to have to use some um, supplement, some kind of spray okay. to remove some of the reflectivity and make it scan. So what are we doing to the windows? Uh, the windows, we're going to put this developer spray. There's lots of different solutions. This is the one that's uh, widely used in the industry. And what this does basically is just uh, forms a very minimal thickness uh, of white coating on top of the surface that we spray. And then, you know, that white coating, since it removes the, in this case, it's not reflective, it's transparent, it removes the transparency. And uh, so that once the laser hits the windows, it's gonna be reflected back and the cameras on the scanner can catch them and scan. So the thickness that it adds, is very, very minimal. You can read on their instructions, I think about 10, 15 minutes of spraying at about two, three micron of thickness, but then foot powder and flour add a lot more thickness. So oh, okay. for applications where accuracy is absolutely critical, they prefer to use this. Going with my own custom color on my Vossens, we're gonna call it matte white bronze. Yeah, it's such a frosty looking little car there. <laughs> You. So these are the reference sticker targets that we need to place on the car or okay. the object that we're scanning. So for example, I'm going to start from here. I'm going to start populating that about four to five inches away from one another. So once we bring the scanner and we're scanning, what happens here is, as you can see, we have laser beams that shoot from the middle part from here. Seven laser lines shoot out okay. and we have two cameras. While we're holding the scanner and moving around, these laser lines are hitting these targets and these targets have a retro reflective surface on top of them. The laser shoots from the middle, hits the target, and the target reflects it back to the two cameras, which creates a triangle between the camera, the target, and the laser. Whoa, okay, okay. And since the internal distances are known through triangulation, 
That's how the scanner always knows where it is. There has to be at least four of these targets in the field of view of the scanner at all time, at any time for okay. proper triangulation. Okay. If it's less than four, you, the scanner won't be able to locate itself. And nothing bad happens, it's not gonna add bad data, it just stops scanning. And then as soon as you can pause, add more targets, and then you keep going, and then it keeps scanning. So if, if I had put one, two, three, four, around this and it can see all four will it will still scan this it'll one? still scan this okay exactly okay that's awesome so the targets don't have to be necessarily on that exact area or that piece that you want to scan it just has to be in the field of view of this scanner it's a calibration plate there's a certain procedure that the software is going to ask us to, to go through and it's basically just holding this scanner at 14 different positions relative to the plate and we're getting feedback from the software that tells us once as soon as we're at that right spot so that's it now our scanner is calibrated we're going to record the location of all of these targets that are on the car to create a global reference model. And you can see all these targets being registered one after the other. That is cool. You can see our distance meter on the left side. Oh, this is the distance yep. meter? 12 to 16 inches. Okay. And we have the same LED on the scanner that gives us the same feedback right here. Okay. It's hard to see, but you can see all the targets in space. Depending on the color, the darker the color of the part that you're scanning, the more laser power you're going to need. The lighter the color, the less laser power you need. Our software has an automatic adjustment tool for that laser power, so all we have to do is point the lasers at the part and the surface, and the software automatically calculates the right shutter speed for it. So, let's see right now. That is a wild pattern. Whoa, that's a sunroof. Okay, that is sick. <laughs> that is really cool. Yeah, you can really see the definition in the model just that quickly. That's and you can actually zoom out while you're doing it too. See what you're seeing. Yeah, that laser's really showing up much more uh, as it gets darker. Yep, exactly. And nighttime, it's like a laser light show. <laughs> so, this is about, I'd say, a third of the car that we've gotten so far. So, save that. If I played above and beyond this shot right now, <laughs> it would fit. It looks like a rave.
even though the sun has set, it looks like it's been a lot longer than it has been. It's really been only about what? Two, two hours maybe? Yeah, within, within two hours to get the whole thing scanned into the system. So we've done it in a couple sections and they overlap. Right now he's gonna combine them all together and we're gonna get the tow truck to pick the beast back up. And there you have it. There is the final model of the car. Now in this version I had to reduce the size of it from the one gigabyte file that he sent which was reduced from the 18 gigabyte file that he made but I had to knock this down to about 5 million faces just so this little laptop, this gaming laptop could run this. But you can see there she is. I'll be doing quite a bit more with this as we go on and then of course you Patreon users you're seeing the more advanced version of this video in the next day.